I wonder what Mary thought that day when she was giving birth to Jesus. The angels had told her what it was about. They said what was going to happen. They said who he was. But do you think that she may have doubted a little bit? Mary, did you know your son would someday rule the nations? It's amazing to me. You guys are all looking at me like, did you not read the book? I did read the book. <laughs> I'm going to have Kara get ready to bring our children up. And we're going to gather around this morning for a little time of Christmas. I am thankful for our church. And I'm thankful for the people who believe in what we're doing here. It's uh, very exciting for me to watch these things happen and, and see how it works. And for somebody to walk up to you and hand you funds that funds this thing that we're doing this morning. It, it just shows that God is really going to touch and he's going to bless us. Um, he believes in what we're doing. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes every year at Christmas, I like to think about making it as simple as we possibly can. The Bible says that being a Christian, finding salvation is very easy. Cora wants the puppy. Cora's decided this isn't so fun. She wants the puppy. She wants the new Yes, she likes the puppies, doesn't she? I know Duke went to heaven. Yes, Duke went to heaven. We had a dog that went to heaven a couple weeks ago, and Malachi reminds us that we can be still happy, right? Yep. Amen. We have one more dog. We got one more dog. <laughs> That's right. We got one more dog. <laughs> it's always good to have one more, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys are here this morning. I'm glad Mom and Daddy's brought you out in the cold weather. Did you guys like that snow this morning? Yeah. It was cold, wasn't it? Did you play in it? No. Are you going to go sledding today? Yeah. 
You know, I think mom and dad should take you out, take you sledding. I think that would be wonderful. I'm so glad my boys are big enough they don't need me anymore. Amen? So I'm going to stay in next to the fireplace this morning and just stay warm, right? Do you guys remember the story of Jesus and how he came to earth? Let's go over here in Luke 2. And I'm going to read you the story this morning about Jesus. And we'll talk a little bit about what it means, okay? The most important thing is that we have Jesus in our hearts and that we understand that a long time ago, Jesus came to this earth so he could be like you and me. And then he would grow up and he would become the sacrifice for our sins. And so we all sin. The Bible says we all sin, all of us. And so we all need a sacrifice for our sins. So let's read in Luke 2. It said, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made, and Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one in his own. You guys hear mom and daddy talking about taxes? We still have to do taxes. Isn't that amazing? Over 2,000 years ago, they were talking about taxes, and we're still talking about them. Everyone has to pay their taxes. And all went to be taxed, everyone in his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth in Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Have you ever waited for a little brother or a little sister to come at your house? And you just get so excited waiting for that to happen? I think that was probably happening there with Mary and Joseph as well. They were so excited about a new baby in their life. I know his name. Do you know his name? What was his name? Yes, it was, it was Jesus, yes. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Sometimes this part reminds me that we get so busy in our lives, sometimes we don't make room for Jesus in our lives. You know what? Sometimes we wake up on Sunday mornings and we go, oh, let's not go to church. Let's go do something else. It's kind of like it was then when they couldn't find room for Jesus to be born. Sometimes we don't take the time we need to allow Jesus to come into our hearts. Here they laid him in a manger in these warm clothes. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Would you be afraid if you saw an angel of the Lord come? You don't think you would? Oh, I might be a little afraid. I might just shake a little bit. Yeah, they protect us. Angels protect us. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, and you shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. This part reminds me that we as Christians have a responsibility to go tell people about Jesus, don't we? When we're in school, we should tell people about Jesus. When we're in the grocery store, do you go to the grocery store? Yeah. When you're in the grocery store, tell people about Jesus. Tell them that you have Jesus in your heart. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. 
And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all of these things and pondered them in her heart. Mary thought on them every day. That's what ponder means. It means to think about it. Do you guys ever ponder? Do you ever ponder whether you should make a mess or not? You don't ponder that, do you? You just make a mess, right? Well, Mary was pondering these good things in her heart. She wanted to understand what they meant. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. And it was told unto them. And when, and when the eighth day came and accomplished, the child was circumcised, and his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. See, that seems pretty easy, doesn't it? Jesus came into the world, and he was just a little baby. Have you ever held a little baby in your arms? Yeah. Aren't they so sweet and kind? And some, you held Cora one time? Yes. Cora, Cora doesn't always like to be held, though, does she? Yeah, you carry your Cora around sometimes? Yeah. Remember when Charlie was born? How little he was. We carry him around still, don't we? You can't get him out of old Raymond's arms. He's always carrying him around. That's what Jesus was like. He was just a little baby. And the Bible tells us that we can carry Jesus around in our hearts that we can have him live within us and all we have to do is believe on him the bible says if we believe in jesus and we believe that he is the son of god and that we believe that he died and was crucified for our sins and that he lives again we can have him in our hearts and when jesus lives in our hearts he changes everything for us did you know that Logan, did you know that? I know you know that. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Jesus was lived on the earth for 33 years? And then Jesus had to die. He died for what? For our sins, right? Yes. Uh, he came back for, on Easter for roast, didn't he? <laughs> he came back on Easter, uh, and that was so that he could live forever and so that we could live forever. I remember when I was a little boy about your age, I used to cry at night because I was afraid. And my dad said to me, son, you never have to be afraid if you have Jesus in your heart. And from that day forward, I've never been afraid because I asked Jesus to come into my heart and he's my Lord and he's my Savior. Isn't that wonderful? Wouldn't you guys like to know what's in those buckets behind us? Do you know why we give gifts at Christmas? Logan? So we can have more toys? I think that's right. I think that's pretty much right. We have a lot of Yes. Yes, Rachel, that's good. It reminds us of the gifts that were brought to Jesus. And that's why we get them. And sometimes that's why it's important for us to think about, is it better to get them or to give them? It's hard when we're little because we really like getting lots of presents, don't we? But as we grow, we should learn to give as many or more than we get. We, got, we give away a lot of money. Yeah, we, you got to get a lot of Mimi's things away because Mimi's got so much stuff, doesn't she? You tell Mimi she's got to clean that house up. Yeah, I, I better be quiet or your Mimi's going to get me. <laughs> Aren't they wonderful? Moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas. It's just that simple. To know Jesus and to have him in your heart. The Bible says if we can take him just as a little child, these kids aren't questioning and wondering how can it be. They believe with all of their heart that Jesus came. He came to that manger, and as you heard this morning, he then hung on a cross and he died, and he came back again, and he came that we might have life and have it abundantly. 
And this morning, that's what we can all have. If you've come in this place this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, or maybe you're not walking the life that you need to, the greatest gift that you can give is yourself. Offer yourself to the Lord today and say, Lord, be the Lord of my life. Can we pray that prayer together today? Let's all bow our heads, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask you just to pray after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. I know you came for me. I know you came for me. Thank you for coming to earth. I want to be a, save, a, a Christian. I want you to save me. I believe you, Lord Jesus. And I will live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, that means that Jesus has come into your heart. And from this day forward, you're different. I ask you to pray every single day. Ask Jesus to come to be with you. Ask him to help you, and Jesus will. It's just that simple. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I need you, and Jesus will be there for you. Amen? Yeah. Some people say to me, J.D., why don't you do this with the kids on Christmas instead of preaching a message? It's not because I can't preach one. It's because sometimes I do think we have to get really simple. To understand the real gospel of Jesus Christ. And to me, having my own children and, and now having many nieces and nephews, it's wonderful to have the opportunity to tell them the simple story of Jesus. And to see their faces light up when you talk about that newborn baby that was born so long ago in Bethlehem. And I encourage you, tell that story on your Christmas don't let Christmas go by without sharing that story. We have a tradition at our house. We get up and our boys are grown. They're once turning, they're just turned 27 on Friday, and one is going to turn 24 on in May. And so our boys are big. We still like Christmas. And they spend the night at our house on Christmas night, and we still have a tradition at our house. We get up as we have for the 27 years that we've had children. We get up in the morning and we read the Christmas story. Before they can open a present, before they get candy, we sit down and thank God that he gave us a gift that we could never give back. He gave us a gift that we can never understand. He gave us a gift that no price, no amount of money will ever matter. He gave us eternal life. He gave us salvation.